Yo yo, welcome to another episode of Road to WTT, episode number 7 I think, we are up to 7 episodes. Today is the first video of the Road to WTT series, where we actually away on a different tournament. We finally changing gyms, and, and I can't be more happy about that, because uh, I'm, even I'm already tired of looking at our old gym, so... Uh, new scenery, which is very good. Today is pretty long episode, but only three games. But I decided to include every single point that uh, I recorded. Uh, and unfortunately, I recorded only quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals that I played at Manitoba Open. I, I just, I just thought that there was no point in recording um, round of 16. And I don't believe I played round of 32. I think, I think, yeah, I only played four games in the open singles, which is, which is pretty good with me. I didn't have to exert more energy in doing group stages because. I, f I believe first four seeds went automatically through and uh, I didn't have to play uh, a lot of games to get to the final so uh, that's what I liked about the tournament the, uh, about the disadvantages of the tournament the floor was uh, I don't want to say kind of slippery because it was a lot of slippery so uh, that's probably the one excuse I'm gonna have for this tournament but everybody was dealing with the same conditions so uh, it's, t it's totally fine with me First game of the day that you're watching, I'm playing against uh, my boy Kevin. Uh, I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm not even gonna try. Uh, I believe he's from Germany, and he's actually very important to this episode. Because during my final versus Matthew Lemon, who you already saw in one of the previous episodes, the Canadian national team member, uh, I recorded the final, but unfortunately my phone died during the fifth, fifth set, which is a little bit of a spoiler in itself. Uh, but yeah, I, I had to ask him and he, friends that he came over with uh, in order to find the footage of the last game. And fortunately enough for me, they had the footage uh, and it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit worse, but I have to deal. We got to do what we got to do to survive, you know. Um, but yeah, thank you for Kevin and thank you. He, he was pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, he had pretty solid forehand. And also we played him uh, when we played open doubles. I didn't record any open doubles because I thought it was like a warm-up event because we played doubles before singles. So uh, yeah, I was like, uh, I'm not gonna record doubles just for respect of Gogo as well because maybe she didn't want to be on camera at that, at that point. But also because uh, I was just treating it as a kind of a warm-up for open uh, open singles. I didn't I didn't really treat doubles as such an important event. But uh, we also played in Kevin and doubles and already saw there that he has got a solid forehand. Uh, and whenever he had the chance to attack from forehand, that's where he used it. But this this type of game where I'm so much better than somebody else, not to sound too cocky as some people in the comments probably gonna, gonna say, but uh, I treat it as a kind of a training session. I try out different stuff, I try out different serves, I try I'm trying to make my serves to get used to the gym, I'm trying to get used to the serves that I'm gonna serve in the future. Maybe try out some weird trick shots uh, for my to get my feeling better. Like I saw you did, I did a couple of strawberries. I'm practicing this kicker serve right now, serving from the right side of the table that I'm also uh, trying to implement into my game right now. So these type of games are very important, I believe. Even though even though you're playing against weaker opponent, some like people think like, why? What was the point of strong guys playing? weaker guys but these games are actually pretty good in order to determine uh, where you at and what you kind of need to not to work on but what you need to fix uh, before uh, before starting serious serious games but thank you to Kevin for helping me with uh, with the footage of the final game uh, we moving on to the semifinals against Steven Yan I believe his last name is uh, Manitoba player and we played all Manitoba guys uh, in this video. Uh, Steven has a rating of 2300, which is pretty solid. I'm currently at 2541, so uh, I'm still a little bit, a little bit higher than Steven. But Steven was a pretty good opponent as well. Uh, Steven was pretty tough, and uh, I believe that I maybe got a little bit luckier with the draw because Matthew, uh, as you can see on the other side of the table, on the other table, was playing against Terry. Uh, definitely don't remember his last name. Sorry, Terry, if you're watching this. Uh, but uh, if I, I believe Terry is a little bit tougher opponent, even though he has a lower rating, rating than Steven. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe. Ooh, that beautiful forehand. 
uh, I believe so. I got a little bit luckier with the draw, but but anyway, Steven was pretty tough. And uh, don't let the easy first game deceive you because I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have problems of my own in this game. Um, before before we start the final though, I want to address a little comment that uh, happened uh, in the last episode of Road to WTG. Somebody in the comments left a very funny comment to me, which was uh, basically talking about like my forehand looks like I'm a, a, a guy in garage just try harding, uh, which was very funny because uh, I do struggle with my forehand a lot of times, but I didn't know that it looks weird. But of course, uh, my backhand, I believe, is the, the stronger uh, out of the two. But forehand is more consistent, so I have to rely on my forehand as well. But I believe in this tournament, my my forehand was actually there. Like uh, comparing it to last week's video, where where we had a uh, we had a training session, I was missing a lot of my forehands, uh, and even my backhand wasn't as consistent. But I felt good throughout the whole tournament in Manitoba, um, from practice sessions to even um, doubles matches my forehand felt very nice uh and i was planning to change my rubbers before the tournament but i decided not to um just because first of all i didn't want to spend money on dignics because they'd be they'd, they'd be expensive but second of all i don't want to uh, have that feeling of uh unused rubbers because i believe when they are they are played in they are a little bit better and they're not as harsh uh, especially on the forehand side so I decided to stick with uh, my older rubbers, which I believe was a good decision because it felt v fine. The only thing that maybe didn't didn't work so well for me was uh, my full work, but uh, already I, I posted some of the vid videos for members and some members uh, already were talking about how I move a lot better and my knees look a lot better. So, uh, so that's definitely a plus. Uh, I'm like 16 or 18 kilograms down. Uh, since we started this series and you can definitely notice even though uh, I have to say that this shirt doesn't really f suit me really well uh, I look bigger than I am maybe uh, or it just shows the characteristics of my body that probably don't don't look that good <laughs> but uh, yeah and, and this is by the way this is 3xl but it it's a little bit of uh, you know Chinese measurements so as you can see, I'm slipping a little bit, but we are 2-1 up. Uh, and Steven was a very good opponent, but he was more of defensive style player, which uh, probably su suited me a little bit more, even though I made a lot of mistakes in game two. In game game three and four, though, I took it a little bit easier. Uh, my coach was uh, my doubles partner, Gogo, and she was uh, encouraging me to keep the ball on the table more, which is, here as you can see, I'm, I'm just keeping the ball on the table. I'm making sure the point is as long as possible. And that's what helps a lot. And also by coaching little kids. Oh, beautiful, beautiful block right here. Uh, by coaching little kids, I kind of noticed a little tactical stuff that I implemented for myself. And I'm going to be talking about it a little bit later when I'm going to be playing Matthew. Uh, but I believe that you can learn from that as well. Um, anyway, we are... Is it 7-5 up? Yes. Couple of backhands work. Oh, great point. Great point by Steven. 7-6. I, I had a big lead. Then I... Uh, came back with a good downspin serve and it's basically game over after that if if I if I make these backhands and forehands and if I move well then this game is just it's it's over from from that point I, I believe I, I am uh, very good if the point is long and if I make my shots but final of the tournament big crowd uh, gathered uh, and Matthew was ready for me and I expected that because I believe last last time I just caught him by surprise the last time the game ended 3-0 three, three in uh, my favor uh, and I believe Matthew just didn't know what to do against me and he had plenty of time almost two months probably since the last tournament where he had time to think about how to play me what to do and um, study me a little bit more but also he was we, we were in touch since the last tournament and he was he knew that I was coming so he was preparing in order to uh, come out and uh, give me a tough a, a tough game and it was a tough game uh, as you can see first game I started really well but Matthew immediately uh, found a little bit of uh, antidote against me I, I should say and this kicker serve was problem for me the whole game but uh, it was first game was a very interesting test in, in order to determine what kind of the game plan uh, maybe he's gonna take and if he's gonna change anything so far 
uh, I was I was just putting pressure on him just like I did uh, in the last game we played and by Matthew missing a couple of shots and getting into the groove of things uh, we are 10 we were 10 7 up uh, we missed this back and right here which brings us to 10 9 uh, and fr from there I'm telling you the game was very close a little bit netball uh, and then two netballs in fact and it back to 10 10 which probably shows how close this game was another kicker shot that I'm struggling with and I'm gonna let you know a little bit later how I kind of dealt with it but we using our backhand again to uh, tie up the game and using our forehand flick in order to start at least some sort of attack from Matthew surf and then my signature down the line fast surf to close out the first game and this first game was probably the most important one of the whole game uh, if you're not counting the game number five because let me tell you this next two games I get slapped up like crazy Matthew just came out on a mission look at that the guys just one hit everything and I'm telling you I was trying to play my old tactic of how I played Matthew the game before and he was definitely ready for it he de like I can tell Matthew got ready for for this game and that shows a lot of respect you know so uh, I can uh, appreciate uh, my opponent uh, and their desire to win but as you can see game two is not going well it's 1-8 uh, and I'm just getting slapped up at this point so at this point I'm just trying to think of stuff trying to I guess not think of stuff but try out different stuff to see if it sticks uh, like playing off the table right here but uh, at the end of the day it's 10-3 and easy game for Matthew uh, while speaking to my coach uh, she was trying to instill in me that I need to play a little bit more carefully but uh, even though this this is not Steven Yen anymore this is more serious competition I believe that playing carefully in these type of games is not the option that I had in uh, my semi-final game and as you can see Matthew already starts 1-4 I cannot receive it's 1-5 uh, obviously uh, like playing at home always helps but uh, it's just you can see I, I cannot make any anything uh, at this point of the game uh, I couldn't receive again this kicker serve that I, I just can't read enough uh, I got good backhand to go and probably at this point I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do in the next game uh, because I don't make anything 11-2 and uh, I actually denied any coaching from this game because I just I knew I had to regroup not only psychologically but tacti tactically so the main thing, I know I'm going to be spoiling all of my tactics for Matthew if Matthew's watching this, and I, I hope he's watching this, uh, but uh, I changed my serve a little bit. I only started serving to his uh, forehand side, to his front side, in hopes of him uh, starting a softer attack, right? Because he was coming over from backhand side, it was uh, like it was, it was strong. Uh, and I, the main thing I changed, I started doing more of a side spin variation of the serve it was either down spin or side spin to his forehand trying to keep it not so not too short but not long as well um in in hopes of matthew starting something soft softer of an attack because if 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 i do an opening attack out of somebody's chop matthew was countering it very well so i was basically going for darko yorgish tactic of doing side spin side top spin serve or a lot of the side spin in order to have the opponent start attacking at me so then I can play a little bit faster in my third ball which helped me help me in this situation Matthew didn't know what to do in that in that place but also my good start at 6-1 helped me because as you can see Matthew came back and at 7-6 that game I had an opportunity to take a timeout and I coached a lot of my students who had were in similar situations and I never took it in hopes of of course um, in hopes of uh, save the timeout for the next time and I did the same thing here and it totally worked out so game five we go and this was you know game game five at this point is a toss you know uh, whoever gets lucky whoever um, uh, whoever just executes a little bit better whoever has a cold head a little bit better uh, and yeah as you can see we changed the angle because my camera died and this is the Kevin's friend footage I forgot his name but at least we have something right and you can see 
this is a very close game we are at 4-4 5-4 four, four, four. great great long push to forehand so yeah that's that's what i was trying to do i was trying to keep the mix of keeping matthew not playing from the backhand side but keeping him longer on the forehand side and then and then basically changing the game to forehand side but again fifth game is always a toss you, you never know what can happen it's all about experience and i don't want to say that i'm more experienced than matthew i, be, I believe we're kind of the same the same in experience uh sense but uh i want to say that it it's all about who kept the cool head and i believe i was my head was a little bit cooler because i already won the matchup and matthew just wanted to win so bad that it kind of uh went wrong for him like at this back end for example i believe uh, that this backhand was probably the most crucial point in the game and again i miss the first uh first uh kicker serve that matthew did and it was very smart for him to go for two kicker serves uh at 9 8 i already knew that i'm gonna take a time out here because i was saving it uh, and this was the exact point i was saving and you can it may be a little bit dirty for me to wait till matthew comes over and then call a timeout but i called to the last second and then i knew it was going to be a down serve so i sliced it long and matthew didn't expect it which worked great for me because I read the whole situation. I took a timeout and I knew it was going to be. It only can be a down. I, I didn't. I didn't think that Matthew will be brave enough to serve topspin. And then it was the point of closing it out, and closing it out the game. Great point to finish. Determined first place in Manitoba. Matthew gave me a great matchup once again, but we go out on top, and I couldn't be happier about it. Uh, thank you uh, to everybody at Team Manitoba who uh, put this tournament together. It was a very great experience. Uh, and I'm hoping to come over and for another tournament. I believe it's going to be in either in June or July. And it's going to be another great Road to WTT episode. Uh, but thank you to Matthew. He, he gave me another uh, great game. And hopefully we can do much more than that. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe. And I believe our next tournament is going to be in Saskatchewan in May. So I hope, hopefully I'll make something before that. But next tournament is going to be May. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye.